Last Saturday, the 26th of September, saw thousands of people take to the streets of Dublin for the now annual March for Choice. The march is organised every year by the Abortion Rights Campaign. The current key demand is that for the repeal of the Eighth Amendment. This amendment, passed in 1983, equates the life of a mother with that of a fetus. Its implementation through the legislation of the Labour Party and Fine Gael government means, in effect, that a doctor who helps a pregnant person have an abortion or someone who procures one in Ireland could face a jail sentence of up to 14 years. One of the positive aspects of the march this year was increased visibility of the fact that not only women need abortions, but also trans men and non-binary people. A poll commissioned by Amnesty a couple of months ago showed that over two-thirds of the Irish people want abortion to be decriminalised. That's quite a significant figure because if you remember the referendum was passed in 1983 and that means that nobody who voted in that referendum is of childbearing age anymore, which also means that everybody who is of childbearing age had no say in this particular law. From the politicians we get the usual cynicism. The Taoiseach and the Kenny, for instance, recently said that he has no intention of repealing the Eighth Amendment. This despite that large percentage of people who would like to see abortion decriminalised. His stance is little more than a cynical calculation on how he thinks Fine Gael voters in his particular constituencies might view repealing the Eighth Amendment. In the meantime, every day, 12 people have to travel to the UK or beyond in order to procure an abortion. Most days, at least one person is illegally taking abortion pills they've obtained off the internet. In theory, they could face a jail sentence of up to 14 years for that, and let's remember, in Northern Ireland, which has similar laws to that of the Republic, one woman is already being prosecuted for procuring such pills for her daughter. That's the context in which we would say about twice as many people as last year turned out for the March for Choice. It was a well-organised event with a wide variety of speakers. We've become all too used to to political protests being dominated by speakers who are politicians and are all more or less repeating each other in the hope for future votes. This one was very different. There was only one politician speaking among the dozen or so speakers and many of those who spoke were giving voice to communities that would often be marginalised and excluded from this debate, including the migrant community and Irish travellers.